up on the motion say aye. And those who are against the motion say nay. The eye is happy. Hello and welcome to the program. I am Dennis at Digun Luye. It has been an intense week of interrogation, commendations, and of course, as is tradition, taking the bow as President Bola Tinubu's ministerial nominees took turns to face the Senate to put forward their cases as to why they should be confirmed as ministers in the Tinubu administration. Over the coming weeks, we shall take a look at how the nominees fared during their appearances before the legislators. But for now, let's focus this episode on the appearance of an individual who has consistently flown the flag for youths and women in governance, as has been well noticed by Mr. President. Dr. Beta Edu, is there anything you would like the Senate to know about you? My name is Dr. Beta Edu, and I thank God Almighty and Mr. President, as well as all the distinguished members in this house, for granting me this great privilege to be standing before this great house and Nigerians as a young person taking up this huge responsibility when I'm confirmed. I am a public health specialist I had my MBBCH from the University of Calabar, my postgraduate diploma from the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine, University of London. I also have my MSc from the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine, University of London. The PhD is from the Texel and American University. I was the special advisor to the governor of Cross River State in 2015. In 2016, I became the first Prana Director General of the Cross River State. I became the Prana Director General of the Cross River State Primary Healthcare Development Agency, one with which we built from the scratch. In 2029, Sorry, 2019, I became the Commissioner for Health in Cross River State, and I was then elected to become the Chairman of all the Commissioners of Health in Nigeria. Before this announcement, I was the National Woman Leader of the ruling party, APC. Thank you. Uh, doctor, uh, well, well, congratulations on your no nomination. Um, before Asukwa says anything, let me hear from a, a veteran administrator, uh, His Excellency Benga Daniels. Distinguished senators, I am Otumba Engineer Benga Daniel representing the people of Ogun East Senatorial District. Although I'm not from Cross River State, but I'm very proud to recommend the nominee to my colleagues. I've had the privilege of meeting her about seven, eight years ago. And I was uh, pleasantly surprised because she was, as a matter of fact, my coordinator for that state. And I must say that she coordinated well. But what I wasn't sure of was uh, his background in terms of medicine. And getting closer to her, I discovered that she's one of the Amazons of this country. And I cannot but be thankful to Mr. President for nominating her. But not only that, I discovered that she's probably the youngest nominee and also a female. And I think that uh, with this kind of uh, personality, uh, all of us will start appreciating that 
probably it's time for us to start getting into retirement because uh, strong, ebullient characters like this are coming into the polity. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Uh, nominee, I can see you have a very wonderful CV. And I'm happy that uh, during the pan pandemic, you were a commissioner in Cross River State. And during that period, it came as a surprise, a big surprise and a big blow to our health sector. Seeing what happened between 2019 to 2021, 2022, when the pandemic was being able to be tackled, what kind of ideas will you bring on table for Nigeria in the health sector to be sure that if anything like that will come again, we'll be able to face it, especially in area of research for vaccines. Thank you. I'm delighted that she's back in Nigeria after studying abroad. But doctor, you will notice that over 60% of Nigerians made doctors that this country has produced are no longer in our shores. And you have been away, you studied abroad, and you have seen doctors working abroad, and you are back here, and you have seen our doctors working. What will you now say is the reason for most of these doctors living? And what will you advise the government going forward? Right now, our doctors are also on strike. How do we make sure that you make our doctors stay in, work for the benefit of Nigerians, and then making sure that the doctors also don't go on strike? When doctors go on strike, it means clearly loss of lives at every given time. If you are made a minister, what do you now tell the president? If you are made a minister in health or in any other ministry, because you are a doctor, what ideas are you bringing to the fore on the table in making sure particularly people don't leave this country for other countries to practice? Thank you. Olorati. Adebole, representing the good people of Lagos West. Dr. Beta, I want to congratulate you. Congratulations on your nomination. However, I have this question for you. We are in a world where social entrepreneurs and non-governmental organizations are increasingly and significantly getting involved in the development of urban communities. How well are you going to use your office to make sure that majority of our women are part of this development of the urban communities? Particularly, as our woman leader in the past, and you have done a very wonderful job being a woman leader. This is another opportunity for you, this is another call for you, to put the women appropriately to where they should belong. If you look at the three tiers of government, you will realize that we have very few women who are part of governance or government. How best are you going to also use your office to ensure that we have many women in position of responsibility in, in this country. We have what it takes to be there. We have everything, we have everything that it takes for women to be up there. How best are you going to continue? I use the word continue purposely. Are you going to continue to ensure that we are where we should be? Thank you and God bless you. If your portfolio goes to Ministry of Health, what do you intend to do on area of university teaching hospitals 
and relation between the University Teaching Hospital, State Hospital, and private hospital, and issue of industrial strike in the area of health sector. Federal medical centers in the state almost will have, it, it will have every, every, it, having it everywhere. And if you look at the remuneration of the federal government and remuneration of some of the states are not equal. How do you intend to intervene? Because my little experience in the governance, when we are paying remuneration of the health workers in the state, and before we realize it, both the medical doctors and nurses transport their cybers back to the federal medical center and leave the state hospitals empty. How do you intend to work with the state, federal government, private practitioners, and see how we can harmonize their remuneration so as that we can have a better health delivery in their sector? One. Two. Most of the services you knew in abroad, given, if you look at it in Nigeria, some extent, you will be a kind of disappointed. Not that we don't have an, an intelligent physicians, intelligent doctors, but we are lacking on infrastructure and equipment. In that regard, what do you intend to bring on board to support the health sector to improve in terms of having equipment to work and bringing our doctors like you there in Abra coming back home to serve Nigerians. Thank you very much. Very simple question for you. You are aware, I know, you know that um, the maternal mortality rate in Nigeria is about 570 per 100,000 live births, correct? And that's the, the fourth terrible uh, in the whole world. We are fourth. And we know globally the best point of taking care of healthcare delivery is at primary care level, all over the world. For any healthcare system that is successful, the secret is in primary healthcare level. What will be your plan in case you are assigned to the health ministry for the primary healthcare system in this country? Thank you. For us as a country, we have challenges that stare us in the face, beginning with governance and leadership of the health sector, fragmentation, duplication, wastage of funds, poor coordination amongst key players in the health sector. Nigeria suffers right now from what they call the Jaguar syndrome, where doctors and other health workers are leaving the country in their drones. The World Health Organization recommendation is that we should have one doctor to 600 patients. But in Nigeria, it's basically one doctor to 5,900 patients, let's say 6,000, which is completely unacceptable and cannot give us a reliable health system. We just went through a pandemic which probably should have been a great window of opportunity to fix our health sector, but it was not fully utilized. Like you said, 60% of Nigerians, of course, pay out of pocket, and they look forward to a better, more functional health system. What should we be advising and working with our very, very, strong politically 
conscious precedent to see that we are achieving the health sector. Number one, I think the beginning of the problem is governance. We must get the right governance and the right structure from the top all the way down to the health facilities. Who are those manning it? Who are the managers? Who are the planners? Is it properly planned? And what are those adjustments and streamlining that needs to happen? Like a distinguished senator rightly said, there are federal medical centers everywhere. There are teaching hospitals everywhere. How functional are they? What quality of service can they offer? As it concerns the health workers that are living, a couple of things can be done. Number one, we can change the payment structure for health workers to see that they get better incentives and they can stay on. They are living because probably country like Saudi Arabia promises a greener pasture and that's why they're living. Number two, we can make the environment more conducive for them to stay so that they can thrive and deliver their health services. Number three, it's important for us to create another structure where health workers can be employed outside the direct structure that we have now. In the United States, sorry, in the United Kingdoms, I'll give you an example. You have the doctors who are on locum and they still work in the NHS. And you have the doctors who are employed by the NHS directly. So some are employed through agencies and then some directly. This way you can sip in every single health worker from wherever they are. We need every one of them. I would also want to suggest that as a matter of urgency, our medical institutions across the nation should be improved to train more health practitioners that will go into the system. Beyond this, it's important for Nigeria as a country to concentrate on our health insurance. I'm very happy and I'm very thankful to this legislative house that you were able to pass the bill to make health insurance mandatory for all Nigerians. Everyone should contribute the little and we all share the risk and we share the benefits. That way we can offer free health care to pregnant women and children under five that will reduce maternal mortality and reduce under five mortality. That way we can reduce catastrophic expenditure that have sent several families into poverty. I would want to go to the question on the women. Nigerian women need empowerment at all levels, beginning from the grassroots all the way up. I'm very proud of Mr. President that he was able to appoint into his cabinet a good number of women, which is the first start. We want to use this opportunity to plead with the legislative arm that bills that will support and protect the Nigerian women should scale through in the 10th assembly. That way it provides a legal framework for women to increase our participation in politics, governance, and leadership. I'll speak briefly on the poor health services and I'll round up at that point. Primary health care is the foundation of any health system in any country. And that's the closest health system to Nigerians, where they live, where they work. And except we fix the primary health care, we cannot achieve universal health coverage. The government, working with the legislative arm, have provided the basic health care provision fund. We want that, private sector participation, and indeed, all our development partners to come on board to see that Nigerian primary health care is completely functional and that will go into the secondary, the teaching hospitals and specialist hospitals to offer care. Thank you very much, the Senate President and distinguished members. On this occasion, I'm not speaking just for Cross River South. I'm speaking for my secondary constituency the young Nigerians. Dr. Beta Edu is a bona fide constituent of mine in that regard. At just 36 years old, she's just about a year younger than me. We served together in the Cross River State Executive Council. She was Commissioner for Health, I was Commissioner for Finance. No? Are you saying that um, 
are you saying that this Senate should look into the maturity of those who are nominated? That, um, that uh, uh, you are, how many years that is something, and that uh, she's uh, 20, 30 is something. So we will look into all that by the time we are doing confirmation. But go on. Thank, thank you, Your Excellency. Mr. President, um, like I said, she's a constituent of mine, and I wanted to prove that point. Beyond that, Your Excellency, I have worked with her closely as a Commissioner of Finance when she was Commissioner for Health. In 2020, during the breakout of the coronavirus pandemic, we worked closely where she was the chairman of the COVID-19 task force, and I was the secretary. She's extremely brilliant, very dogged, unwavering on any task that is given to her. She will accomplish it at any time. I want to, I want to say that every one year, at least on this side of the aisle, all 59 of us know and recognize her as a, one, as a young woman leader. On the other side, no, it's not about partisan. But on this other side, the other 50 gentlemen, our colleagues on this other side, you know as the woman leader you would like your party to have. <laughs> I am pleased today that Better I Do is not a former parliamentarian or a former lawmaker because she didn't have the privilege of taking a bow and going. She has dispatched the questions that have been asked to her with aplomb and to the admiration of this hallow chamber. I want to say that without further ado, that we please let her take a bow and go. Ladies and gentlemen, my friend, my sister, Dr. Beta Edu, distinguished colleagues, thank you very much. We, your colleagues, we are now ladies and gentlemen. The civil senator, Jerry Bear. The leader of the caucus, Cross River State Senators Caucus. The nominee before us is a true cross -Riverian. And hers, in this case, is just a case of Rep. Sister Lukito. The first speak for itself, going through her CV and how she has adumbrated in response to all the questions put forward to her. I want to crave the indulgence of this Senate that my nominee and our nominee from Cross River State takes a bow and goes. Thank you. Father Honsi, I don't think you have any other thing to add. So because uh, 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 it is the consensus, the consensus of the Senate that you have answered the questions. If you have answered them well, you will hear on the day of uh, confirmation. But if you did not answer them well, you will also hear from us. So you may now take a bow. Well, that concludes this episode of the program. There'll be more next week as we focus on the screening and confirmation of the ministerial nominees. Thanks for watching. I am Dennis at Digum Louis.